Hello and welcome back in the workshop, this time for Arts and Crafts. Right, for this Arts and Crafts, the victim, so to speak, is this uh, Umarex Luger P08 blowback BB gun under the Legends collection, which is a very nice collection of uh, predominantly World War II uh, BB guns, I guess for specific airsoft scenarios and just for collectors who want to have a little bit of Plinking fun indoors. Anyway, this is a all metal construction, beautifully made, I must say, for the price. Uh, full size, of course, and uh, works just like the real one. Working safety there. Trigger assembly works exactly like a real Luger. Disassembly as well. You have this magazine that holds BBs down the front. And the CO2, which fits in nicely. Um, as I said, disassembly is just like the original. Let's pull it back a bit, take down pin, remove the side plate, which just like the original has the transfer bar there. And here's the sear assembly. Everything slides forward. The ejector obviously is, is just part of the casting there, doesn't have any role to play. Uh, the toggle lock is basically a, a hollow shell, pot metal hollow shell, so that uh, it keeps the weight down. Here's the, the bolt assembly for the feeding of the BB. And here is uh, the internals, it's, a, it's hammer fired. When you pull the trigger, hammer flies forward strikes this valve here on the back of the magazine which releases a blast of CO2 out of this hole upwards. And it corresponds up here like so and in this hole the CO2 gets split half well a proportion of it goes and fires the BB and the other half blows the reaction back. So it's quite gas hungry uh, but it's a price you have to pay for a, a good simulation, at least, of the, the BB action. Let me show you how that works. Let's quickly reassemble it. There's plenty of videos out there showing these actually being shot. So. Uh, be anything special. So there we go. And when you fire, boom. There we go. Now, problem with this, for me at least, is when it looks too new. Um, yeah, I think uh, something of this age, I think, would be nice if it has a bit of a bit of surface loss. I mean, uh, you know, look look as if it's been been through the wars, as it were. And also, these nasty hollow plastic grips really they really have to go. And uh, well, I suppose I have a confession to make. In my younger years, I was an avid collector and uh, Wargamer of the uh, Games Workshop Warhammer 40k and uh, all these years I've still kept my painting box and we have all sorts of paints and paint brushes and decals and all sorts those who have played and still play will know what I want about and uh, I'm giving myself a challenge of trying to age the Luger and also to fit some nice reproduction wooden grips for it. So, let's see how I get on. So let's start with the grips, that's the easy part. These are, as I said, hollow plastic uh, grips. They've got a few locking tabs up top which stick into the the frame underneath and the screw just like the original and same on the other side 
Now you can't just uh, buy some repro uh, grips and slap them on because there's rather a lot more going on in these grips in this uh, frame than an original Luger. Um, for one, this is quite thick. Uh, you've got all sorts. Well, this is quite true to the original, but uh, on the other side, you've got all sorts going on here with the uh, trigger mechanism. Um, this big support frame here. Um, so yes, there's some work that needs to be done and also the shape is not 100% the same. So what I did was find these grips on eBay and uh, basically hollow them out through trial and error. As you can see, you're, normally there were there was just a few standard cutouts but I've had to do these, this big area here and uh, cut out there for the safety mechanism and on this side um, for this trigger slide um, yeah, some work to do also the profile here underneath is not the same as an original so that needs to be fitted as well so if anyone's really really interested I can probably make some kind of some kind of measurements uh, so that you can reproduce that. But uh, basically, I said trial and error. All I did was uh, use a marker pen. You can probably see here, and uh, coloured in all the raised areas, and uh, put the grip on. See where it marked, and slowly using a Dremel and um, small fine chisels worked away until it would gradually fit so it's a, it's a trial and error method of doing that um, and then did some very poor checkering on the areas which I'd uh, cut down yeah not perfect but uh, good enough for an airsoft, airsoft pistol I think Anyway, we put these on, and uh, these don't have locking tabs, I should say, but I found that they actually sit pretty well, simply with uh, with just the screw in in place. Like so, so that's already looking a little more the part, and they're also slightly slimmer than the the plastic shells, so fits much better in the hand. So that was the easy part. Next, I'm going to try and uh, apply some kind of weathered finish to the black areas. I should add that. Uh, there's the obligatory uh, serial number and uh, safety information etc which is hidden under the barrel and there's these fake numbers. It's a shame about the P08 there, that was really unnecessary. Um, so we'll see if I do anything about that or just leave them as they are. Right, the technique I'm going to use is called dry brushing. It's uh, in miniatures. It's used to highlight edges, um, such as white, for bringing out uh, runes or edges of armor or scales, chainmail, etc. And it's basically what I want to do here. I want to highlight edges to simulate uh, use, holster wear, etc. And um, it's very simply what it says. You get a very old brush, that's essential because it will be ruined by this process. Dip it in your paint of choice. You uh, rub it on some paper until you can't really see anything coming off the brush. A quick check is to actually 
brush on your fingers and see if your fingerprint gets uh, highlighted and you just want that to just ha just about happen and then you brush along your edges and uh, you'll need to do it quite a bit for it to actually deposit because there's hardly any paint left on the brush as it is um, so without any water nothing and uh, then that gradually brings out the edges it's a bit time consuming but uh, Hopefully it'll look good by the end of it. So here's an example of uh, the cover plate with some dry brushing applied. Obviously it's got to be applied to areas where you would expect wear, so all the raised areas, corners, etc. So that's one small bit. Now for the rest. Right, so I've done as far as I'm willing to go. I've picked out all the likely places of wear. So the edges here, the tree guard, front of the frame, these standing out corners, ridges on the barrel. Uh, I actually noticed they even included a bit of rifling there in the casting of the barrel. Red, erased edges of the front sights. Um, toggle lock, obviously, the extractor corners, the grips here, they would be a bit worn, rear sight, these edges here on the corners, I've picked out the most worn bits with a tiny bit of white as well. So there we are, now it's a uh, honestly used and uh, holstered World War II Luger. So, after all this, there always follows a function test. So, sorry Bambi, aber die Kreatur muss sterben. Now, can't say that wasn't fun. <laughs>